what happens when we keep the leftover food on the table for the entire night? When we see the container in the morning, we find that it is shared by some new members. Yes, along with the food, we even find fungus growing in the container. So what do we do in such cases? Needless to say, we throw it away. This is because if we consume the food shared by fungus, then we may encounter a variety of health issues. This happens because the food has now turned into a poison for us. Wait a second, how can the delicious food of the previous night turn poisonous this morning? That too only with the mere presence of fungi? The fact that fungi grow over it is enough to explain this. Yes, when microbes of any type take over our food, they release certain substances in it. And these substances are quite toxic for us. And hence we say that the food has turned poisonous. This gets us to the concept of food poisoning. In the simplest words, we can define food poisoning as the ill effect on health caused by consumption of contaminated food. And how does the food get contaminated? It gets contaminated due to toxic secretions by certain bacteria, fungi, parasites and any other type of pathogen present in it. Consumption of such contaminated food leads to various types of severe infections in our digestive system. So is there something we can do to avoid poisoning of our food? Scientifically, spoiled food is a result of chemical reactions. Yes, the harmful microbes in our food give out certain secretions that bring out chemical changes in the food. These chemical changes render it unfit for consumption. So can we save our food from spoiling by interrupting these chemical reactions? Of course we can. And the only way to do this is by inhibiting the microbial growth or simply killing these microbes. Either ways, we do not allow the toxic secretions to enter our food. But how can this be achieved? Well, there are several ways of carrying out food preservation. A few methods have been carried out since ages, while some have been recently developed. Let's have a glance at the chemical methods of food preservation first. We always find our grandma adding lots of salt and oil to the pickle she makes every year. And the pickle, if you notice, tastes the same throughout the year. Have you ever wondered how this happens? Well, this is an ancient method of food preservation that we use. Adding commodities like salt, oil and even vinegar arrest the growth of microbes in the food. Even if microbes attack our food, they get killed. Among all, salt is the most commonly and widely used. Not only pickles, but salt is also used for preservation of meat and fishes. Yes, salting of meat and fish followed by drying them in the sun can preserve them for many months together. Do you know any such commodity that we use daily which acts as a preservative? You must have observed that jams and jellies are added with wholesome amount of sugar. Yes, it is because sugar is also used as a preservative. Apart from making the jams and jellies sweet, sugar also inhibits microbial growth in it. Well, these were the commonly used commodities which were employed to preserve food in our homes or even on a small scale. But what about the food items manufactured or processed on a large scale? Some food items cannot be added with large amount of oil or salt. In such cases, a few chemicals come to our rescue. Yes. Now, apart from salting, oiling or adding sugar, we have certain chemicals that can be added to the food in order to preserve it. The most commonly used chemicals include sodium benzoate and sodium metabisulfite. These chemicals prevent the growth of microbes in our food. And what kinds of food items can be saved by these chemicals? We can add them to squashes, fruit juices and even certain fruit jams. Now these were the methods where the food items were added with some preservatives. But what about those consumables which cannot be added with any such preservatives? Wait a second. We can add preservatives to almost all food items. Then which consumables are we referring to? Well, have you ever thought of adding salt or oil to milk for preservation? How will you add sugar or vinegar to fruits and vegetables? These consumables cannot be preserved with any chemical treatment. 
For them, we need well-designed physical methods for preservation. To know these methods, you will have to watch our next video.